Hello, you absolute legends. I am in shock. The oldest world record in Perfect Dark history has just been beaten. A time that stood for almost 16 years, and until several days ago, was a time that I thought was as fast as a human could ever possibly go. Perhaps it was because I failed to see the potential optimizations that in hindsight seem obvious. But perhaps it was because I just wanted to believe the record would last forever. I've made a lot of videos about crazy records being beaten by extremely talented gamers, and for my own part, I've been responsible for beating some of GoldenEye's oldest records. But it seems as though the tables have turned, as it's now one of my own records that has fallen. In early 2004, I set a time of 25 seconds on the level called War, the third of Perfect Dark's four special assignment missions. When the record was achieved, it seemed like a pretty big deal, and truthfully, until it was actually accomplished, I wasn't even sure if it was possible. Getting 25 seconds was a shock then, and as the years went on, it never really seemed to appear any weaker. Over the past few years, it seems as though all of the ancient records from Rare's groundbreaking duo of classic first-person shooters were being destroyed, and given that this record of 25 seconds on war was among the oldest, naturally people pondered, including myself, about the possibility of it being beaten. Whenever the question was raised, I always said, War 25 will never be beaten. The time was so tight, so precise, so simple, so short. How could you possibly be an entire second faster? Evidently, it was possible. On the 18th of March, Rayan Isran beat War in 24 seconds, lowering a record that had stood for 5,846 days. If anyone was going to do it, it was Rayan. He's the most talented speedrunner I've ever seen. Though as skillful as he is, I still would have said it was out of his reach. In order to appreciate the magnitude of this accomplishment, we have to go back to the beginning. In this video, we will examine the history of Perfect Dark's war on the Agent difficulty. We will learn about the objectives, the challenges speedrunners face, and the discoveries that led to this insane new record. This level has some of the most interesting history in the game, and I really hope you enjoy. Before we go on, this video is sponsored by Raycon. If you aren't using wireless earbuds by now, you are missing out big time. But don't be tricked into spending hundreds of dollars on a new pair. Raycon earbuds cost half the price of other premium earbuds and sound just as good. Now I've been using Raycon's latest model E25 and they are incredibly easy to use. They pair in seconds, they have six hours of playtime, they have heaps of bass and they fit great. I've been using them when I work out, when I'm out of the house, when I'm practicing my various hobbies, and they always feel comfortable. They come with a variety of differently sized attachments to fit any ear. Raycon earbuds don't have any wires or stems, which makes them both stylish and discreet. Most people won't even know you're wearing them. Raycon also has a 45-day satisfaction guarantee, so there is no risk in trying them out. So click the link in the description to get 15% off your order today at buyraycon.com legend. That is buyraycon.com legend to get 15% off your new pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. War is one of Perfect Dark's special assignment missions. Unlike the standard missions, in War we take control of a Mayan, a small Area 51 type alien with the stereotypical large head. The differences between a Mayan and Perfect Dark's protagonist, Joanna, aren't purely cosmetic. They turn a lot more sharply and in general are much more difficult to control. In War, we lead a team of Mayans attempting to infiltrate the Skedar Temple ruins and kill the Skedar King. The Skedar being a different, more antagonistic species of alien. The Skedar Sanctum houses three kings, but on the easiest difficulty agent, we only need to eliminate the first. This is our only objective, and it's a simple one. In terms of speedrunning, the theory is very straightforward. We need to get to the king as quickly as we can to deliver the killing blow. Standing between us and the king are Skedar soldiers that are endless in supply. A slow and steady pace isn't a good idea when the enemies don't stop coming. When they are killed, they respawn near the king and immediately begin hunting us down. We begin the level armed with a phoenix, a useful weapon that fires a basic bolt of energy on its primary setting, but can also unleash explosive shells with its secondary function. The Skedar soldiers carry maulers, pistols that offer amazing utility against enemies with high health. Its secondary function allows for a charged shot that does incredibly high damage. At full charge, it has the potential to kill the Skedder King in one hit, making it a useful weapon to attain. 
Thankfully, the Skedar soldiers we face on our journey can be killed relatively swiftly with a single explosive shell to the face. Since the dawn of Perfect Dark speedrunning, the basic strategy of this level has always been the same. Strafe as tightly as possible through the winding hallways, kill a single Skedar with an explosive shot to collect the Mauler, and take out the King with a single charged shot to the head. Now, as a speedrun, it just wouldn't feel complete without some luck being thrown into the equation, and there is definitely some RNG involved here. The main bottleneck is a single door that grants access to the final section where the King awaits. Obviously, it would be faster if the door was already opened when we got there, allowing us to run straight through. But this relies on one of the Skedder soldiers opening it, and for whatever reason, the position of each Skedder is random. There are a total of four Skedars that can be running around at any one moment, and most of the time they'll be past the door by the time you get there, with the door closed. You may be wondering how the door could be closed when the Skedder obviously just ran through it, but both Goldeneye and Perfect Dark tend to cheat when it comes to enemies moving through doors. If the area the door is located in isn't loaded, enemies will pass straight through as if the door didn't exist without ever opening it. On the rare occasion, a Skedder will be lagging behind enough to be trapped on the other side of the door by the time you get there. This ensures that the Skedder actually opens the door, allowing you through. This single door will ruin almost every run by being closed, so speedrunners need to perform many runs to get the luck they need. The random positions of each Skedder make it more difficult to kill them as well. The winding hallways produce many corners that block your vision from what's up ahead. While the explosive shot does eventually prove fatal to Skedders, it's not instant, so you need some distance between you and the Skedder when you make the shot. If you turn a corner and run head-on into a Skedder, it's almost always too late to kill it without losing time, especially given that producing an explosion right in front of you will cause you to get thrust backwards by the blast. Speedrunners have an idea about which Skedder they want to kill and where, but it won't be in the same position every time, so again, more luck is needed. The door and Skedar positioning makes this a lot more frustrating than it needed to be, but in this field, that's just the nature of the beast. When the Perfect Dark rankings were created all the way back in August of 2000, the record for War Agent was 28 seconds. This was held jointly by Snapdragon, the creator of the original ranking system, a programming genius, and Paragon, the first truly dominant champion of Perfect Dark. At this point in Perfect Dark's history, no proof was required to claim records, and while the top players did make videos of some of their times, in this case we have no footage of these original 28s. This lax stand on proof requirements would ultimately cause one of the first controversies in the community, and it just so happened to involve War Agent. On the 22nd of August 2000, a user joined the Perfect Dark forums under the name Modnike18. Two and a half hours after joining, he would create a topic claiming that he had tied the world record on War Agent, and that he was going to beat it. Thirteen minutes later, he replied to his own topic proclaiming that he had achieved a new world record, beating War Agent in 27 seconds. The top players immediately doubted Modnike's claim, and honestly, I can't really blame them. In under three hours, he had joined the forums, tied the existing world record, and set a new one. In hindsight, I'm surprised this time was accepted at all, but as history shows, it was accepted. Modnike is still to this day credited with being the first person to achieve 27 seconds. Modnike was hit with a barrage of questions trying to ascertain the strategy he used. First and foremost to test the validity of his claim, but also to see if there was something the other players had missed. He provided a brief outline of what he did, which offered no new insights. But he did mention that he used the 1.2 control style. This is the control style that uses the C buttons to move and strafe instead of the control stick, which is only used to look around. Unbeknownst to the community at the time, the 1.2 control style is far superior and much faster than the 1.1 control style. 1.1 uses the control stick to move and look, which means that in order to turn left and right, you need to sacrifice some movement speed. Players were adamant, however, that there was no difference. Paragon confidently stated that the control style does not affect your times if you are an expert at one of the styles. Even Modnike was clueless about the differences between the control styles, stating that 1.2 was not faster. This major disconnect was happening because no one knew at the time that it takes a few seconds to get to full speed, and every time you stop running forward at maximum intensity, you lose full speed and have to rebuild it again. This meant that with 1.1, every time you turned a corner, you lost a bunch of time. 
As far as 1.1 users were concerned, 27 was impossible to achieve, and it very well may be. It's understandable how they felt it was unattainable given that their own runs were so inexplicably slow. It wasn't until October that Snapdragon was able to prove that 1.2 was superior and informed the other players. Does the fact that Modnik was using 1.2 mean that he did in fact achieve 27? Not really, and in my opinion he probably didn't get it. When pressed on giving specific details, he provided a suboptimal strategy and didn't seem to be very knowledgeable about time targets. It took him 10 minutes to achieve 27 after getting 28, but couldn't replicate it again after that point. 27 didn't prove to be too challenging though, and as the next two years rolled along, it was tied by over 20 runners. Surprisingly, there was no new strategy developments, even though people were so close to breaking through. In August of 2000, the day after Mod Knight claimed his 27, the user Darkcall pondered. Hell, I just thought of something. If this is true, then 26 is easily possible. Getting hit boosts you. You have a phoenix with explosive shells. Explosions from the phoenix hardly hurt, but they do hit you. People who played Goldeneye might remember this being done with grenades on Runway. Maybe we can get it to work here. It's funny that he mentioned Runway, as I just covered it in my previous video. But while in Goldeneye explosive boosts save a very significant amount of time, in Perfect Dark damage boosts are far less impactful. It would be hard to notice a single boost being effective at all. You'd have to get many to see a noticeable difference. Dark Call was on the right track. Though figuring out how to use the Phoenix to boost yourself wasn't immediately obvious. Using the walls wasn't an option as the fact that you're facing forwards would merely produce back boosts. It wasn't until late 2002 that this enigma was finally cracked. Brian Bossart had joined the competition earlier in the year and was making a name for himself in Goldeneye, discovering huge sequence breaks and setting classic world records. He had been grinding hard for months and did what many Goldeneye players do when they get bored, he moved over to Perfect Dark. While Brian would eventually become champion of Perfect Dark several years later, at this stage in his career he had barely touched the game. On the 3rd of November he would achieve his very first Perfect Dark world record, tying the 27 that had been set just over two years earlier. But he knew this level had more to give. He devised a strategy that would change the level forever. On the 30th of November 2002, Brian Bossart would achieve this run. Brian had figured out a way to self-boost using the Phoenix. You might think that looking at the ground and shooting is pretty obvious, but it's not as intuitive as it seems on the surface. If you just simply look straight down and try to boost yourself, you won't gain any time. If anything, this will only slow you down. The key that unlocked this technique was holding all the way up on the control stick. This made the cursor aim ever so slightly down, which, because of the angle you're running at, would shoot the ground behind you. It's barely noticeable but this tiny variation makes a world of difference. Aside from the fact that it's a lot more difficult to navigate when you're looking straight down, the boosts make it even harder to control your character. This is much trickier than it looks. Brian's 26 was pretty good, but there were definitely a couple of flaws that immediately stood out. While he did use a decent amount of boosts, there were obviously areas where he could have fit in more. In total, he self-boosted 10 times, but a week later another speedrunner known as Snowblind matched the 26 with a total of 16 boosts. This is a huge difference. Snowblind's run had some obvious errors as well, which seemed to even it out. As I mentioned earlier in the video, shooting a skedder too close with an explosive shot will cause you to get pushed backwards and lose speed. Both Snowblind and Brian were backboosted by their own explosions. Snowblind also switched strafes going through the door and just before the king. This is definitely slower than keeping the same strafe direction the entire way, and I mentioned this in my previous video as well. If we were to try and formulate the ideal run, there would be a few basic ideas. The first would be to add as many self-boosts as possible. Then, we would hope to kill the Skedar to get the Mauler without getting hit by the explosion at all. In order to do this, we can't kill the first Skedar like Brian did in his 26, as there isn't enough distance to avoid the back boost. 
Therefore, the second Skedar is a better choice, but we'd need to get lucky. The Skedar has to be as far down the hallway as possible, which is admittedly uncommon. There would only be a single strafe change that would take place when we killed the Skedar. Keeping the same strafe direction the entire way isn't a goal we could realistically try to achieve, as we need to break strafe anyway to kill the Skedar, so switching here shouldn't lose any time. Now that we know what we want to do, the challenge is figuring out how to implement it. When you're analysing something after the fact, it's so easy to wonder why things weren't tried sooner, but one of the things people fear is sinking time into a strategy that goes nowhere. Most people don't want to spend tens or hundreds of hours testing ideas that have no guarantee of working, which is why, for good or bad, it's usually a small percentage of participants that make most of the breakthroughs. By the start of 2004, a total of 8 players had matched 26, including myself. It was so long ago I can no longer remember what inspired me to do so, but I started trying to optimise the level. I fit in as many boosts as I possibly could. I grinded until I got the Skedar positioning I needed, and on the 16th of March 2004, I achieved this run. Aside from the run itself, there are a couple of things to note. The first is the lack of in-game sound, which I was unable to capture at the time. Capture cards were much more difficult and expensive to attain back then, and my crappy, cheap card wouldn't accept RCA audio cables. The second thing to point out is the skip right at the very end after the king was killed. There is a period of about 3 seconds missing in the video. This is because I stopped recording on the VCR to examine the run. At this time, I didn't even know if 25 seconds was possible, so what I used to do was stop the tape after each run to re-watch it, and use the in-game timer shown on screen to figure out how close I was to 25. It was a complete surprise that 25 appeared on screen, and I hurriedly pressed record on the VCR again to try and capture as much of the end screen as I could. This definitely wouldn't pass proof standards today, but it was ultimately accepted back then without too much controversy. One of the things about Perfect Dark that makes verification a bit easier is the timer on screen showing exactly how fast the run is. In this case, the quality is really bad, as were most videos from back then, but anyone with a keen eye can see that the final time shown on screen was in the 23 second range. It takes 2 seconds to finish from when the objective completed message comes up, which gives the final mission time of 25 seconds. War Agent in 25 seconds was a really strong record for the time, and it would be over one and a half years before anyone tied it. Just as Brian had popped his world record cherry with War Agent three years earlier, another player was about to get his first, and that was Rayan Isran, otherwise known as Perfect Ace. Rayan joined the community in September of 2005. He joined with some really impressive times, but what was really crazy was his age. In his first post, he introduced himself. Hi guys, I am also known as Perfect Ace, and I am new to this elite. I believe I am the only 10 years old in this elite. Started playing at the age of 7. Check out some of my sick times. When I started speedrunning back in 1999, I was 13 years old, which seems pretty young now. Many of the GoldenEye and Perfect Dark players back then were in their early teens. The age demographic was much younger than it is today but I can't remember a single other person who was as young as Rayan was when they joined. Not in Perfect Dark or GoldenEye speedrunning, or any other game for that matter. Even if someone was that young, they were certainly not as good as Rayan was at that age. The fact that he was so young caused some people to even doubt he was a real person, assuming that he was the ult of another player having some fun. This prompted Rayan to record a live video of himself playing Perfect Dark, to prove both his age and his skill. The level of choice was War Agent, he would achieve a 26. This is one of the most classic videos in Perfect Dark history, and was the first introduction of arguably the greatest player of all time.
Yeah, take that, ma. That's too good. Perfect. At the end of the video, Rayan exclaimed, Take that, Matt. This is in reference to Matt Cook, an ancient Perfect Dark speedrunner who was particularly vocal about his distrust of Rayan. From this point on though, everyone knew Rayan was for real. On the 24th of October 2005, Rayan would be the first to tie 25. Just like Brian Bossart three years earlier, War Agent was also Rayan's first ever world record in Perfect Dark. This was considered insane at the time. The 10-year-old had only been in the community for a month and had already tied what was considered to be one of the best world records at the time. What's even crazier was Rayan's thoughts about the state of the run. The day after achieving 25, he would post. Anyway, I don't think that run was good at all. I guess 24 might be possible. This comment began a community discussion on whether or not 24 could be done. Ideas for new strategies were tossed around and some hilarious comparisons were made. Lechmaster stated, I'd say 24 War Agent is as likely as 5 Defection Agent. Stop dreaming. Defection Agent in 5 seconds was performed by Illu in 2010. Ryan White stated, I'd say a 24 War is comparable to a 21 Runway. The boosts are there and are mathematically possible, but whether or not it is indeed actually possible is another question. If you've seen my previous video, you already know that 21 Runway was achieved last month. The idea of skipping the mauler completely and focusing on boost throughout the entire run was proposed. It is possible to kill the king with two quick explosive shots from the phoenix. Ultimately, this was a dead end. Even with more boosts, the time lost from needing two shots on the king eliminated all of the time gained. With no concrete conclusions, the discussions on War 24 faded away. Over the next 15 years, more and more people tied 25, and every single person used the exact same strategy. When the level begins, boost yourself eight times before entering the sanctum. Reload. Perform eight more boosts as you approach the Skedar soldiers. Reload. Fire one shot at the second Skedar and collect the mauler as you run past. Run through the door that is hopefully open before doing two or three more self-boosts. Immediately switch back to the mauler and fire one charged shot to the king's skull. It's important to note that you can't self-boost after you shoot the Skedar soldier, as you don't pick up weapons when you are looking down so it's imperative you remain looking up until you collect the mauler. But in saying that, there was always a gap between picking up the mauler and the next couple of boosts that were performed once through the door. It was obvious that there was room here for some more boosts, but it was seen as too difficult and probably wasn't worth it. Every single 25 that had been achieved was high. People weren't even close to 24. Throwing in two or three more boosts wasn't seen as something that would tip the scale, and people were more concerned with getting through the door cleanly. By March of 2020, 31 people held the record of 25. With the fall of Runway 22 in February, War 25 had become the longest lasting world record in history for both Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. Over the previous couple of months, Rayan had been absolutely demolishing Perfect Dark, setting mind-blowing records one after the other. In mid-March, he would set his sights back to War Agent to finish what he had started over 14 years ago. In order to eke out more boosts, he would use a technique known as Quick Reload. The standard reload for the Phoenix is painfully slow, but you can do it much faster by simply switching weapons back and forth. He would begin boosting immediately after picking up the Mauler, threading the needle through the door with complete lookdown. Even with these improvements, I still would have said 24 was out of reach. But alas, on the 18th of March, exactly one month after the oldest world record in GoldenEye history was beaten, Rayan Isran achieved this run. The movement in this run is perfection, and the difficulty involved in navigating the level while looking straight down and self-boosting can never be overstated. I still can't quite believe 25 was beaten, and it will likely take a while before it truly sinks in. 
For such a short and simple level, War Agent has seen its fair share of controversies and groundbreaking runs. Some of the most talented and successful Perfect Dark Champions have christened their careers on this stage. This might be the end of this story, however, and I'm inclined to believe that War 24 will never be beaten. But who knows what the future holds, and what crazy discoveries lay ahead. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.